Thank you, and uh, thank you for, uh, for having me here. Um, well, as we all learned uh, during this conference, um, uh, during exercise over time, core body temperature rises, and core body temperature can rise to a very uh, high point or um, relatively low point, and this is influenced by many uh, different factors, such as environmental conditions, uh, running speed, body mass index, and numerous other factors, uh, a lot of them we've heard about for the last uh, two days. Um, if you focus on um, specific uh, studies, on the results of specific studies, um, for instance this one, you notice that um, even when uh, subjects perform the same exercise bout, uh, there's a great inter-individual variation um, within these subjects. Uh, and this specific study is an example of the last 10k uh, of a marathon. Um, but also this example in which uh, subjects performed exercise on different uh, environmental conditions, uh, you notice that the histograms are pretty white at some points. So there's great individual variation, even though the subjects performed similar exercise. Uh, so uh, this raises the question, is the variation completely exp explained by the currently known factors? Uh, and from literature on heat illness, uh, which is uh, different, I realize, um, we know that heat illness can even occur in cool conditions, uh, which is relatively unexpected, um, and that a history of heat illness can uh, increase the risk uh, to get a repeat event. Uh, this gentleman, by the way, is just very excited. He doesn't have uh, heat illness. Um, so the question is uh, raised whether the variation uh, in uh, core body temperature during exercise is partially individually determined uh, on top of the other known factors. Uh, and uh, therefore, we question, is uh, core body temperature rise during exercise when a person exercises the same protocol uh, on separate occasions? Is that uh, reproducible? Does he uh, attain the same core body temperature at the end of the exercise? So the aim of our study was to investigate to what extent uh, maximal core body temperature correlates in individuals participating in two consecutive editions of a 15 kilometer run. Uh, therefore, we included 59 participants of this run uh, who all participated in two consecutive editions. 53% of our subjects were male and they were uh, aged on average 48 years. Uh, and the environmental conditions were uh, cool in, on both occasions and very similar with a wet, wet bulb globe temperature of 11 uh, versus 12 degrees Celsius. So we instructed our subjects uh, to ingest uh, a wireless telemetry pill uh, at uh, 8 a.m. Um, with uh, which we used to measure intestinal core body temperature. Then at baseline, uh, we, uh, at around uh, noon, we measured core body temperature and uh, body weight in running outfit. Then uh, about one minute prior to the start, we measured core body temperature again. This was uh, at about 1 p.m. Um, and uh, then subjects started uh, the race. We did no measurements during the race and uh, no interventions were uh, performed. Uh, and then within 15 seconds after finishing, we again measured core body temperature uh, and um, we uh, determined their finish time and calculated their running speed. Then uh, subjects reported back to our lab uh, within 10 minutes, minutes after finishing and we measured their body weight uh, again. Um, by the way, we did not correct for any sweat entrapment uh, in the clothes. Um, and subjects did this uh, for two consecutive times and we compared these measurements in edition uh, one versus edition two. Um, so the biometrics of our subjects were uh, similar. Um, body mass index remained similar. There was one year in between uh, both uh, measurements. Um, and uh, body surface area, which we calculated uh, using the formula of uh, Dubois, uh, was also uh, completely similar in both race editions. Then um, subjects ran at similar running speeds, just under 12 kilometers per hour. Uh, and uh, the percentage dehydration, which is defined as the change, uh, the percentual change in uh, body mass, uh, also was uh, similar in both uh, race editions. Uh, with a decline of about 1.4%. Uh, 
Uh, this is a plot of core body temperature on, uh, in both race editions. The um, solid line is race edition one, the dotted line is race edition two. And uh, we noticed that the, the core body temperatures at baseline start and finish were similar. And uh, core body temperature increased from about 37.6 at baseline to 39.4 degrees Celsius um, at the finish line. Uh, and we correlated the uh, finish temperature um, in both race editions, and we found that uh, the finish temperature in race edition one correlated significantly with the finish temperature in race edition two, uh, with an R square of 0.24. Uh, also, we were a bit worried that any differences that might have uh, occurred between both race editions, since they were held one year apart. Um, any differences in running speed, BMI, or percentage dehydration might impact our results. So we um, added these uh, factors into regression analysis, um, but the regression analysis revealed that uh, no, none of these changes impacted significantly on um, our results. So um, we found that 24% of maximal core body temperature uh, could be predicted just based on the uh, first temperature measurement. Um, and it's uh, relatively difficult to compare our measurements with previous literature. Uh, there's a lot of data uh, with repeated measurements, but most uh, studies um, impose some kind of intervention, such as uh, diurnal var variation, uh, variable environmental conditions, variable heat loads, or variable exercise protocols, which makes it, which makes it difficult to uh, get a grasp on, on our specific uh, research question. Um, the present study was conducted under similar environmental circumstances and uh, as I said our regression analysis revealed that uh, there were no differences in BMI running speed or dehydration so um, this suggests that the maximal temperature in cool conditions at least um, is likely at least partially uh, determined individually by other factors than um, the, the current factors. Um, so we went uh, on PubMed, searched the literature on potential mechanisms, and there's one mechanism that we thought was interesting and that I would like to point out. Um, and that's, uh, there's, uh, there's a release of inflammatory cytokines during um, exercise. Um, and these cytokines uh, may produce a fever-like uh, response. Dr. Coombs uh, presented some results on this yesterday. Um, and uh, this might uh, result in an elevated hypothalamic set point. Um, and whilst Dr. Coombs did not find a significant effect, there were um, a few uh, recent studies that did find uh, a potential effect um, in which antipyretics were used and uh, there was a reduced uh, core body temperature during exercise. So we believe that uh, this might be a mechanism uh, for which future research uh, would be warranted. So in conclusion, uh, we found similar core body temperature responses in the two consecutive uh, race editions, and that 24% of the core body temperature could be predicted by just uh, a core body temperature measurement um, by, the prior, uh, by the prior race edition. And we believe that future research into the specific mechanisms that are responsible uh, is warranted. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions from the audience? Thanks for your presentation. Um, have you considered uh, correlating the change in core temperature, so maybe the difference in the starting core temperature, absolute-wise, uh, describes uh, a lot more of your variability? Yeah, we, uh, we looked at the delta. Um, that, that also correlated significantly. I think the R was 0.42. Uh, so we did do that. Coming. How, well, our experience is that measuring core temperature with the pill, a telemetry pill, is difficult. And I just wonder whether you have some difficulty from one year to the next. Uh, within, is there differences in the started temperature within the same individual? You should make uh, individual comparisons. 
Uh, we did not look at one-to-one -one, uh, comparisons, but um, our experience actually are quite good. Um, we do this with multiple studies, and uh, we found uh, quite similar results. Uh, well, we did not compare one-to-one, -one, but they seem to um, they seem to correspond quite well, actually. Because, for example, I just look at one value in one uh, year. Yeah. That person have a temperature 39 and another yeah, year I, 37. Yes, exactly. It is, it is. <laughs> that, that particular one you're referring to, uh, to the outlier here below, right? Mm. Uh, that particular one, I'm not sure if that's a measurement error. That could well be. Uh, so I, I agree on that. Um, uh, but, well, again, I, I, I stand by these results. Uh, just to add on to you, in my experience, five hours after ingestion, I never get good data you know, for a core temperature. Yeah, that is a limitation to this study. It's a bit tight. Uh, generally, to be on the safe side, you want uh, eight hours between ingestion and your first measurement. So it, it is a bit tight, uh, and um, I can't correct for that. Yeah, so there's a huge possibility that you know, just before you get that measurement, that guy or that lady probably pop in a drink you know, and just lower that temperature. Well, it could be, especially on baseline, it might have, it might have been an influence. Um, we know from experience and by talking to, to these athletes that uh, they uh, hardly drink during the race. Um, and uh, these measurements are mostly influenced by fluid ingestion. So we believe that the uh, fluid ingestion um, for the finish measurement wasn't an issue. Uh, one quick question: um, Between the years, did you monitor training load coming up to the coming up to the race, and could the um, the subjects' training or their their fitness level from one year to the other have affected the core temperature um, rate of rise or increase or final increase? Um, it might have. Uh, there might have been an effect. We did not ask uh, our subjects if they altered their training status, so I can't I can't answer that. Did you compare, for example, then the, the finishing time from one year to the other? And really yeah, we did. Um, I, I I don't uh, know the exact numbers by heart, um, but their at least their uh, running speeds uh, corresponded well. There were there were no significant differences between their running speeds. I have a, a couple of questions, very quick ones. Uh, number one, did you did you look at clothing? And number two. Uh, are these people more or less? Were they? Uh, uh, what was their finishing uh, sort of sort of uh, position? Were they kind of like first? Uh, and did you see any 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 differences in terms of your results comparing uh, people from different uh, levels of sort of? Um, well, in regards for their uh, their outfits, we did not uh, record them, um, so I can't give you any data on that. Um, and uh, the um, sorry, what, what, what was the second, second was question? finishing position. So yes. whether you saw any 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 um, these th these subjects uh, were taken from a random sample uh, of subjects. Um, so uh, the distribution was diverse. Uh, there were people with fast times, and I think the range was uh, about fifty. 50 minutes for the fastest one and uh, 160 minutes for the slowest one. So it's really diverse. So did you did you see any differences, like people having a big, uh, large variation if they were finishing uh, in the first places compared to the last? Um, one? No, the variation was uh, relatively comparable to this. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for an uh, excellent presentation thank and uh, everyone for sticking out in this difficult time after lunch. Uh, we'll have a coffee break and we'll continue on in the next session in a bit.